<laughs> Hi, welcome to the Derby Podcast. My name is Pilar. My name is Ryan. <laughs> and this week we will be discussing Mark Rosman's 2000 magical made-for-TV comedy, Life Size. Yes. <laughs> um, Life Size follows Casey, who is a tomboy, who is also the quarterback of her 7th grade football team, and her workaholic father, Ben, as they cope with their lives two years after the death of Casey's mother and Ben's wife. Casey contrives a plan to bring her mother back to life, but she receives a doll for her birthday, which accidentally inter- interferes with the incantation. And, lo and behold, the doll is brought to life instead of her deceased mother. As crazy as this seems, the now life-sized doll, Eve, teaches both Casey and Ben valuable life lessons about the importance of doing what makes them happy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> how did you feel about this, Ryan? Uh... Well, I thought it was okay. Okay. I did not have high expectations going in. Right. Um, and I was I was pretty bored um, watching the movie, <laughs> uh, but it did it did keep my attention. Okay. Pretty so much throughout. I didn't fall asleep. You didn't fall asleep. Mm-hmm. You didn't want to turn it off. Like you weren't actively like. This movie's terrible. I I need to turn it off right now. I did think about taking a break at some point. <laughs> Just <laughs> pausing it? Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, obviously, um, I love this movie. Um, I definitely loved it as a kid, and I I like it now. I mean, I'm not like, oh my god, let's watch Life Size, okay. but I definitely feel like it's, you know, it's a movie that I'll watch if it's on, you know, if I ever get regular TV. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, it's not a movie I'm going to actively seek out or go to, to my mom's house and dig out the, uh, the VHS again, which this is my original VHS of Life Size. Yeah. It's number, uh, 36. Yeah. In the old uh, VHS catalog. Going back to the story, um, the main characters that we are, uh, kind of just revolving around throughout this whole movie is obviously <laughs> Casey. <laughs> Um, Casey is played by Lindsay Lohan when she was like, I don't know, like 12 years old. She's around that kind of preteen age. And so, uh, it's definitely showcased in this film, um, as she's like a teenager who's like, not really like girly or whatever. She plays football, um, which, I mean, I want to get into that at some point. Um, but yeah, she's just like this kind of like, a uh, tough love kind of girl who like, is also sad because her mom's dead. So, yeah. but she's like too tough to like really show it to anybody aside from her dad. But her dad's always like never around to like be there for her emotionally. Yeah. And then we have Ben, who is her father. Um, he is played by this. This man's name is Jeer Burns. Jeer? I think it's Jer. Jer, like Jeremy, but without yeah, the I think me. Yeah, it's short. But he goes by Jer. I don't know. Jer? I don't know. I've never heard his name. <laughs> um, I, I thought I knew who this guy was. I thought I'd seen him in a different film. But I think I'm just mistaking him for a Wilson brother. Like, oh, I thought he was Owen Wilson for a really long time. He's not Owen Wilson. He sounds like him. Um, and then we have Eve, <laughs> who is played by Tyra Banks. Um, which, I mean... I was pretty surprised by by her acting. Uh, I th- you were surprised by Tyra Banks' acting? Yeah, I thought it was really good. Okay. Well, I thought it was better than what I had you thought were, it was going you to were be. pleasantly surprised. Yeah, I was pleasantly surprised. Okay. Well, do you feel the same? Um, no, I do not. <laughs> Um, okay, so those are the three characters. Uh, we have Casey, Ben, and Eve. Um, and then we have little little minor characters. Uh, there's Drew, who is like the office babe, but she's like, you know, an average Pam hot. Uh, and she has like the hots for Ben, but, you know, she doesn't want to tell him or whatever. Um, and we have uh, Richie, who is like, the, the office sleaze bag, who I think is pretty hot, but, you know, whatever. Okay. 
he he's quite charming. Um, he is a little forward, which we we will get into that in the film. Uh, but then there's also Ellen, who is like just a very minor minor character. But I think her presence in the film really establishes uh, Tara Banks or not Tara Banks uh, Eve's like overall demeanor towards like people she doesn't know and like people who are like socially below her. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, but yeah, there's Ellen. Uh, and that's the whole cast. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, you, you might know J.R. Burns from Breaking Bad. He is the director of the rehab facility that, that Jesse goes to. Okay. That's where I knew him from. Oh, I don't. He's been, in like, seen he's been in like, <laughs> I don't know, 500 different yeah. movies and, it was, and TV shows and stuff. Yeah, I was trying to pinpoint it, but like, it was like he did like a scene or like an episode of like small things or something mm -hmm. like that. And it's just like, I've never even heard of these shows before. Yeah. Anyway, we'll, we'll get into that a little bit, I guess. Um, you really like this movie. Mm -hmm. Did you have an interpretation of the movie? So my interpretation is pretty much just growing up, being a kid and like going through the motions of like transitioning from a child to like a teenager and like, understanding your emotions and kind of having to communicate those things outside of yourself to like others i just think it's like a nice little growing pains kind of film okay for me i thought i had a similar interpretation mm -hmm. uh so like i think it it wants to deal with like female empowerment like the, right. the eve doll is like you know your classic like oh this this woman can have any occupation, like right. a space, like an astronaut or, or a police officer and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But, you know, she obviously, when she comes to life, has issues like doing basic paperwork and stuff right. like that, you know. Uh, so I think it like shows kind of the facade of the okay. female empowerment doll. Okay, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then it also... At its core, I think it's just about, really about, like, overcoming loss. Okay. And, like, trying to, like, go about your life and not feeling guilty about being happy. Okay. Because I think yeah. that's that's kind of what she teaches both... The daddy uh, and Casey. Yeah, both Casey and Ben. Because mm -hmm. uh, they both learn stuff. <laughs> well, I mean, it's a decom. There has to be a life lesson in there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Specifically, I thought the scene where they are on the bed after the whole fire extinguisher incident, uh, when Eve tries to cook, talking to Casey, she says, you've got to give people a chance. Your mom would want you to be happy or to be with your friends and have fun. Like, that's the <laughs> that's the theme of the movie right there, I think. So, have yeah. fun. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I mean, I think that you definitely hit the nail okay. on, like, what it because when she's dancing with Ben, also, <laughs> she's like, uh, you really need to let loose and have fun. And he's like, you really think life's that simple? She's like, yeah. She's like, I do. Have fun. Like, <laughs> have fun. Like, that's all it's about. Yeah. I do. Secret of life. Um, I do feel like uh, in some sort of way, Eve is like a manic pixie dream girl. Okay. <laughs> uh, like, she's just like quirky and weird and like you know does things her own way because it's like i don't know and cute and like attractive and stuff like that hmm. i feel like it's almost similar she's just too she, the only thing like pulling her away from that is that she's just too uh conventionally attractive hmm. yeah so i feel like a lot of the all girls who like consider themselves manic panic tricks Medic panic. panic. <laughs> the Zayer die. Uh, <laughs> uh, whatever. Um, they'll feel like, oh, I don't want to be like associated with you. Manic panic pixie dream girl. Manic panic pixie dream girl. She's a manic pe manic pixie <laughs> dream doll. All right. So briefly, I want to get into kind of uh, the director, Mark Rossman, uh, mainly because he hasn't done too many things. He's done like, uh, like, like co-wrote a couple of movies and like produced a couple of things. But in addition to Life Size, he also did the movie Model Behavior, which I don't know anything about. Oh, okay, about. yeah. Uh, but he did A Cinderella Story, which is <gasps> the one, one of your one with big... Hilary Duff did? Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Oh yeah, my so he worked with Hillary Duff in both a Cinderella and story perfectly, and no, perfect. No, I'm thinking man. of something else. Never mind. But yeah, he did both a Cinderella story and a Perfect Man with Hillary Duff. Okay. <laughs> uh, Lindsay Lohan. This mm-hmm. was only her second feature film, um, if you want to call it that. Okay. Uh, yeah. She had done The Parent Trap in 1998, mm-hmm. and then Life Size in 2000. Okay. This was like a made-for-TV movie. It came out on ABC. Right. Um, but then she did Freaky Friday and Mean mm-hmm. Girls following this. Um, you know, she's had she's had her ups and downs in her career. Right. Uh, she's currently... On a down. Uh, well, she's, <laughs> she's currently in pre-production for um, a currently untitled movie coming out on Netflix. Okay. Um, supposed to start filming later this year. Uh, we mentioned Jara Burns already. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Tyra Banks... Uh, I didn't really realize this. She was also in Love and Basketball. Okay. Um, but she was, had a very minor role in that. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was also in 2000. She did Live Size in 2000. And then she did a fairly did. prominent role uh, in Coyote Ugly, uh, which I didn't even realize that was her. I haven't oh. seen that in yeah. forever. I think I saw it on TV one time. Um, I don't remember. Like, I remember watching it. I don't remember it at all. Yeah. I think I bought it on iTunes. Mm-hmm. One time, but I just never watched it. Okay like the first thing i bought <laughs> coyote ugly <laughs> um, she's also in life size 2 from 2018 they waited 18 years they couldn't think of a better movie to make in 18 years than life size 2 uh and apparently she has announced that she will be on life size 3 in what the, in the near future so yeah what could life size 2 even bring it's a christmas special Life What's two. the life size three is going to be like an Easter special? Who knows? Let's get into performances and aspects. Okay. Uh, you said you were impressed with. I was with impressed Tyra's with acting. pretty much everyone's acting, except for maybe Jared Burns. You know what I'm talking about? It was like weird and like. He definitely seemed like. It, it, every line that he delivered, he seemed like he was thinking of something else. Yeah. Like he was like. Which preoccupied I'm... and the character wasn't even preoccupied at the time right i mean it kind of serves the character because it's like you know he's thinking about his dead wife or like how he's failing his daughter yeah. um but at the same time it just like made for weird delivery um but i was really surprised by tyra and how goofy she allowed herself to be in this film okay um and i think her acting was pretty good uh same thing with Lindsay. i mean she's like a child and like could cry on call like doesn't matter she's like wailing uh but yeah i think the acting was pretty good uh i like i i said i liked richard he was pretty good okay uh i liked his line delivery and his his nuances uh (laughs) i didn't really like drew but i also like i i feel like you kind of weren't meant to like her. It was really weird because, like, Drew brought Casey the doll for her birthday, but she only stopped to buy her house on her birthday because she was dropping off some files that her father or that Ben had to, like, proofread. Um, it was, like, 8 o'clock at night. It was weird. But yeah. Anyways, so she brought it in. And she was like, sorry to interrupt your night with Casey. Like... Like, this was, like, their night to have dinner together. Right. Or on her birthday or whatever. And it's, like... So she knows that. Knows it's her birthday. But then gets her a doll. It's, like, the worst gift she could possibly get her. Yeah. And, like, she gives her the present. <laughs> and then Casey is, like, oh, it's a doll. And then Drew's, like, but she's not any doll. And, like, takes the present from her. Opens the box. And she says... This doll is a collectible. Bitch, like, it's no longer collectible if you open the box. That de- depletes the whole price of that collectible doll. It made me so mad that she, as a collector, didn't even think about that. And she just opened this kid's present. She's like that kid at a party who's like, oh, can we play with the present I just bought you? It, it, it seemed like <laughs> she stopped by the store on her, she like passed the toy store. <laughs> she passed the toy store on the way to their house and was like whoa well, i'm gonna get me one of these dolls and then was like should i get casey one of these dolls too yeah why not i'll open hers and i'll keep mine in the collector's box <laughs> that's what happened uh well now that i think about it that's probably something i would have done 
Because <laughs> my mom wouldn't let got me got open my dolls. <laughs> uh, so I just opened my friend's doll and played with that one. <laughs> Anyways, so Casey goes to her room and with her doll or whatever. And then at some point, she's like making her little altar for her mom to like re uh, yeah. resurrect <clears throat> her. And uh, Drew walks in there like, like it's her house or something. I don't know what she does. Well, she's like knocked on the door, uh -huh. and then Casey like covered everything up, and then jumped in the bed, mm -hmm. and she's like go to sleep or whatever. And then she opened the door, like peeked her head in, and said something. And Casey was like, "Hey, I'm trying to go to sleep." And then she was like, "Whoa, you have a really cool room here. <laughs> oh my god, look at this doll you got." Uh, yeah, she's just like she just walks in there, and it's like, "Girl, Casey's trying to go to sleep. Get out of here!" And then she like knocks something over. And Casey freaks out. She's like, you're ruining my stuff. Which, I mean, I feel like a typical teenager outburst, whatever. And she, like, goes to clean up her, like, whatever Drew ruined. And then Drew stays in the room. You know, like, girl, you caused this whole scene and you're still here. And then she's like... Brushes the doll's hair. Yeah, brushes the doll ha doll's hair, which has, like, what, what, remains of, like... Casey's with, mom. With Casey's mother's special hairbrush. Right. Her mom's special hairbrush that has the hair that was going to help resurrect her. And you know that doll came with a hairbrush. It's like, it's so messed up. Like, what are you doing touching other people's stuff? Like, this is white privilege at its peak. Casey comes back and she's like, what are you still doing here? And she's like, <laughs> well, I just wanted to say good night. Good night. And she's like, okay, cool. Good night. And then she just lingers. And then leaves. Is that how that scene goes? Yeah, dude. She just like <laughs> stands there and like does this race. Like. And then leaves. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why she likes Ben so much. Because that's what he does. Just He lingers. does do that. All right. So Lindsay Lohan's acting you thought was pretty decent? I think so. I mean, was, she's like a it kid. Was, it was yeah. all right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> um, I, I was... So uh, Tyra Banks is goofy. Like mm -hmm. we we've watched her on America's Next Next Top Model. Model. Yeah, uh, you know we've watched all the cycles basically. Um, she she is a goofy person, so I, I was mm -hmm. not surprised by how goofy her character was. Okay. Um, I I did like some of the jokes that they made. Like they were, you know, they they really knew their doll cliches when they were writing it writing this movie okay like dolls they go to the mall they go shopping <laughs> they know all about fashion yeah um and and we see all those jokes i guess like played out i mean i think that was fun like eve saves casey's life mm -hmm. like that's really yeah really thing. weird uh casey i thought she was gonna have special powers <laughs> well i think that's what she thought she was gonna do oh okay Maybe not, because she was like, I was a police officer once, or something like that. Like, girl, whatever. I don't know. It was very weird. <laughs> <laughs> like, a police officer is not just going to stand there and, like... <laughs> but Ben was like, is there anything we can do to, to make up for it, or whatever? And she was like, let's go to the mall! <laughs> then, like, hell yeah! Drive me to the mall! <laughs> I do feel like uh, there was, like, a weird parallel that I like I associated with something that I learned in psychology uh is that people like trust like attractive people for no reason hmm. I mean only just because they're attractive like uh uh Eve had her attractiveness plus her like helplessness to kind of ease people's like trust in her to like like handle all the responsibilities that they gave her like uh, what's his name? Like Ben trusting her to like pay him back for all the stuff that he bought her at the uh, mall. Yeah. Like you just met this person. You're spending like the outfits that she's buying are. It has to be at least a thousand dollars. He was like, well, that's kind of a lot. Yeah, and it's like, dude, how how far? How much are you going to pay for this stranger to be dressed well? <laughs> but he felt like he owed it to her because he. Like, she saved Casey. Or whatever. Okay, I guess. 
Like, uh, what, I mean, that's kind of an awkward thing. Like, where do you draw the lines? Like, that's true. What can I do to repay you? <laughs> and then it was like, oh, take me to the mall. Buy me a bunch of outfits. Oh, we just like, go to Subway. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I'll buy you a foot long. <laughs> I was thinking like a Starbucks gift card. <laughs> uh, yeah, I did. I don't know. But like to... He, like, gave her this job. He, like, is trusting her with her ch- his child. And uh, I don't know. It just felt like she was giving a lot more chances for somebody who is just a random stranger. Okay. Yeah, definitely. I, I think that wasn't just with Ben. It wasn't like he was attracted right. to her. And that's why he trusted her. It was, like, everybody. Like, literally everybody. Yeah. Except maybe Ellen was the only one who was, like, what is everyone's deal with this woman? <laughs> but that that goes to to that point too. Is that like people who are, are like very unconventionally attractive? Wait, who are un people who are conventionally unattractive? Like I feel like they're they're uh, distrustful of attractive people. That and because they're seen as unattractive, people don't put the same amount of trust in them like they associate them with bad traits so with ellen because she was like seen as so unattractive she's been like kind of been given the gut work which i mean in turn is like teaching uh eve how to do stuff Mm -hmm. um i feel like that's why she was not as uh I, i guess gullible to or susceptible to like eve's like I, I don't like calling her Eve because she would talk to her herself or talk about herself in third person. And now yeah. I feel like I'm talking about myself in third person for some reason, even <laughs> though my name is not Eve. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know. It just, it just feels weird. Um, what else you got for aspects? Um, so aspects, I do like how progressive this film tried to be, especially for 2000s. Um, it had a black Barbie doll who was like the main, like, I don't want to say the main like hot toy because obviously she wasn't doing so hot because uh, they were going to cancel her, which I mean, some can see that as like a microaggression, but also kids just wanted things with microchips in them. So, uh, which what? is stupid because she had a microchip in there. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> she talks. She... Right. She talks. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> I mean, Casey was on the football team and there was like, no questions about it like she was just on the football team and i think that's pretty cool uh what else is there also like the feminism of it all like you know empowering young girls and stuff like that but also uh kind of relieving them of the pressure of being like perfect uh and Mm -hmm. like good at everything or whatever which i feel like a lot of girls feel like they're expected to do uh i feel like they're uh, expected to like have a lot of emotional labor uh, which Casey herself has like a hard time dealing with. Like she doesn't want to be emotional because she one she's a tomboy and two she just doesn't want to seem like weak because her mom died. Okay. Uh, and so I feel like I feel like it was really positive and uh, and like forward thinking as far as like movies about girls. I felt like uh, Disney was doing a lot of those films with like uh, was it I think it's called Crossroads where like. A girl uh, who really loved like doing motocross or maybe it's called motocross yeah uh, <laughs> uh there was i i can't remember but it's like surfer girls uh okay. something like that i felt like and there was the basketball one too there was like twins um i felt like uh disney was doing a lot of those films with uh back then which i feel like now a lot of them since like hannah montana a lot of decoms feel like they're based on like being like a, a rock star in some sort of way or mm-hmm. being like the smart one. Okay. I do want to say a part of the progressiveness too is that like they didn't, they like showed a light form of sexual harassment with Richard or with Richie where he like was like, hey, to Eve, like let's go back to my house or whatever. And she like slapped him. And she's like, like you're being uh, forward. Like, oh, yeah. like, you should not talk to women like this. And he was like, oh, you're right. Like, thank you for putting me in my place. Like, it wasn't, like, it wasn't explicit, but it was, like, enough for young girls to see that and be like, 
I should not be treated like that. And if I am, like, fuck this guy. <laughs> you know okay. what I'm saying? All right. Like, I feel like that is, like, a good level to, like, speak at whatever age level this film was filmed for. Okay. Uh, all right. So you said that you thought it was cool how uh, she's just on the football team. And right. Like nothing's said of it. But there's also, like, I thought it was kind of strange how nothing was said of it. Hmm. And then one of the lines... Uh, okay, so one... Okay, let me, <laughs> let me okay. start over. One of the things that I thought really stood out negatively to me okay. was the football coach. Hmm. Uh, because, like, the, the the movie opens up with a commercial for the Eve doll. Right. And then the first scene we see is Casey uh, playing football. Mm -hmm. And she throws a pass. You don't know it's her. She throws a pass to a receiver or whatever it hits his hands and he <laughs> drops a pass and she's like way to go wiener <laughs> she's like well no that's not even what she says she runs up to him because the play's over you know the fourth down or whatever uh she runs up to him and she says you dropped the ball again and he says you throw like a girl and then the coach comes over there and it's like break it up break it up <laughs> it's like like, you can't say this on the football field? Like, I, I mean... Okay, so I have two problems with this. Okay. All right. The fact that they they kind of, like, surprise you with, oh, she's the quarterback on the football team. But mm -hmm. then they don't, like, address that at all. But then they still make the joke. It's like, you throw like a girl. And then she is scolded uh -huh. for, for having an attitude. And, like, he tells her to go on the bench or whatever. Yeah, I thought she was making fun of him by calling him Wiener, but that's his last name. Yeah, like, she, he, he said like, something. Yeah, like, the coach was like, Wiener, Wiener! Yeah. <laughs> like, she literally ran up to him and was like, you dropped the ball again. And it's like, yeah. Like, how is that a bad thing to say? Like, yeah, maybe the coach should try to motivate this fucking kid or take him out of the fucking game if he can't catch the ball. If you... If you're a receiver and the ball hits your hands and you can't catch it, then that's your fault, man. It hit your hands. <laughs> and then I I did also think it was it was strange. Okay, so we have this whole book thing, this witchcraft book, right? Uh, that she uses to uh, which she steals. I'll get Borrowed. into that. Okay. Uh, so she <laughs> she uses this book to bring. Uh, Eve to life on accident. She's trying to bring her mom back to life. Doesn't yeah. matter. But then at the end of the book, I guess Eve takes it upon herself to get the the second volume of the book. Yeah. And to successfully complete the spell mm -hmm. to turn herself back into the doll. Right. Um. So like, like that's doing two things. So it's like giving this magical being autonomy uh -huh. which is kind of creepy and uh is in direct conflict with um the theme of like oh kids want all these high-tech microchip things like mm -hmm. you know like classic like robot fear is that or artificial intelligence fear mm -hmm. is that it will artificial intelligence will surpass their like motive yeah, we'll we'll learn autonomy uh -huh. and you know make humans themselves obsolete. Okay, so okay. so Eve doing the spell on herself to turn herself back into a doll gives you that, but then it also gives you like, oh, she is an autonomous being. She can, uh, you know, take care of herself. Basically, mm -hmm. she's learned how to take care of herself in these couple of days being a human. Um, but then also, I didn't like that because it's just like, oh, we're running out of time. We got to wrap this movie up. <laughs> well, I think it speaks to like how human she is becoming closer to the deadline of the spell. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So like, I feel like it speaks to that <laughs> aspect. But I mean, I, I, I think I get it. Uh, I don't know. I do feel like the spell was really weird. Like, I feel like the, the, the two spells that they did mm -hmm. just weren't 
didn't feel like equivalent as far as like what they had to do. Yeah, I mean, just the like the first one they had to build an altar and just like say some Latin words, and then the other one was like a whole like little sonata or whatever. Yeah, I mean, it was. <laughs> she was like, "Son of suns, moon of moons." Turning you back into it all. <laughs> <laughs> they like shot it at a very weird angle. It was like the, it was like very out of place, yeah. you know, for what the film felt like. Yeah, definitely strange. Yeah. Uh, I, th- I thought that the spells just in general were like an afterthought almost. Mm-hmm. They were like, ah, oh. the, like, the elevator pitch is like, <laughs> okay. Girl brings a doll back to life instead of her dead mom. The doll teaches her life lessons and also teaches her that nobody can replace her mother. It's like, okay, well, how do we get her to bring her to life? Oh, witchcraft. Let's just do witchcraft. <laughs> and then it's like, they they did no research on right. witchcraft at all. It's like they had two writers and none of them communicated what they were doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Uh, but yeah, I mean, I thought it was cool that they added magic because I think like kids are always like enchanted by that kind of stuff. And I feel like it felt like believable to a child as opposed to like an adult like show. Oh, okay. Yes, into yes. Ben, you yes know? it is. A... <laughs> you know, right. children. That's right. It is a children's <laughs> movie. <laughs> That's uh, why it wasn't explained. Uh, but yeah, I do think it's funny how she like stole the book. Like she had money. I think it was like $150. Mm-hmm. She, but she only had $63. Yeah. And she like left the money there and like a little slip that was like, I owe you. Yeah. And uh, when she figured out that she had to get a, a second volume to this book, uh, which is almost like like uh, one of those like app games where you have to pay to get to the next level. Well, yeah, <laughs> it's like, I mean, specifically, specifically it's like, Oh, you got to get the second volume to undo all the damage you've done in the first <laughs> yeah. volume. <laughs> yeah, you you think you uh, messed up your thing? It's okay. We got you covered, but only for one ninety nine. Can you get the antidote? <laughs> uh, yeah, and so she goes back to the fucking bookstore with Eve, to and she's like, "I can't go in there. You got to go steal this book." Like Eve just became human. She doesn't know how to steal. Yeah. <laughs> like, she barely knows how to walk. Like, you cannot... I don't know. I felt like that was kind of stupid on Casey. I feel like she was smarter than that. Yeah. But... It is what it is. Well, I mean, they didn't even have the book. That's true. They didn't have the book. But I guess... Eve asking if they had it was enough for them to order the book, even though they found out very soon after... <laughs> <laughs> that they were ordering the book for the person who stole the first book. Huh, okay. I guess that makes sense. Yeah, because they didn't have it. And then they were like, the website said it was doing a couple yeah. of days. Yeah, which, huh. I mean, look, like, look, it's 2021. You can order a book off of Barnes & Noble and they can't tell you when it's going to be there. <laughs> There's one more thing on magic, which is like the, um, the lobby man. At the end? Yeah. All right. So, yeah. That's what else I... Okay. So, Eve shows up at the studio. It's like the... uh, I I guess it's like where they manufacture the doll. Yes. Or like the headquarters. Yeah, the headquarters. Of this toy company, Mm -hmm. I suppose. Right. Um, Which is where they have shot the commercial for the Eve doll. Mm -hmm. Um, And she shows up there and she says, I'm home. I'm home. Oh no, she's like, I'm home. And, he's, <laughs> and then the guy at the at the counter is like, you're late. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyway, she finds the thing or whatever, mm-hmm. uh, the where they shot the commercial, and she thinks that is her actual. Uh, that is Sunnyvale. That's where right. she is from. Uh, then uh, Casey and Ben show up, and. You know, Ben, he's driving, but he's just along for the ride Mm -hmm. because he doesn't even know where he's going. (laughs) And Casey pulls him into this building that I don't know how she found the address or, you know, GPS isn't a thing yet. Yeah, that's weird. (laughs) She just knows the address of Sunnyvale or whatever. It's full of crap like that. But anyway, they show up. Uh, They go to the same 
lobby guy, the security guard or whatever, and they're like, what did she say? Like, Did you see a girl who looks like the Eve doll? <laughs> something like that. And he, he says, like, uh, you mean the woman from the photo shoot? Yeah, she's here to pick up her last paycheck. Oh, yeah. I sent her to payroll. I don't know what that means. I have no idea. Like, okay, so maybe there is a woman who they modeled the Eve doll after. Hmm. Who also did photo shoots. Why would there be photo shoots if it's just a doll? Well, sometimes, like, Sims does that almost. They'll, like, get celebrities to make their own Sims, and they'll, like, feature the little Sim celebrity and then be like, it's Billie Eilish. And then okay. Billie Eilish is, like, holding their Sim in their okay. hand or something like that. Okay. So maybe that's what it is. Yeah. But that, that's just, that takes a lot of <laughs> mental uh, capacity to get there. Yeah. It's a lot to expect for children, especially at the end, like the very end, where it's like, Shh, we gotta, we gotta end this. It can only be like uh, an hour and fifty minutes or whatever. Well, I guess it's like twenty minutes, right? An hour and twenty minutes. <laughs> oh, it's ninety minutes. I would have liked that scene a lot better if there was no security guard and you just walk in these doors and there's like a sign that says like Sunny Bells this way or whatever. Hmm. Yeah, that I think that would have been cute. And then she like walks in there and she's like. <gasps> home and it's like um, oh i do like how it was like follow the yellow steps because it was almost like um like dorothy what's it called Wizard of Oz. <laughs> Wizard of Oz? <laughs> yeah where she's like following the yellow brick road back home or whatever oh or wow. to the mystical world wow deep <laughs> it's not deep it's just a reference right okay all right um but yeah i thought that was weird um that he was just like I don't know. Didn't care. <laughs> All right. Anything else you want to talk about with this movie? Um, let's see. Oh, I want to talk about her friends. How her friends were like, get over it. Okay. That's what, that's what I want to say. <laughs> okay. So another aspect that I really liked was the was the dancing number at the very end of the film. I did not like it in the middle of the film where she was at this office party mm -hmm. and she she uh I think the band was like, Anybody got any requests? And she's like, Do you know like the shining star? And they're like, uh no, but I'm sure we can I think it's called be a star. Oh be a star. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, No, but we could probably figure it out if you sing it. And she's just like singing this Barbie commercial. Uh, to these like lawyers and like drew herself says she was like a collector and it's like you don't even recognize the doll that mm -hmm. you're obsessed with like jingle to be like this is weird She's like, like man this is my jam <laughs> everybody was like this is my jam <laughs> <laughs> i do like also find there's like little tiny scenes that make no sense and that was like um where she pulls this old man to dance with and then Ben and Richard like watching and then this guy I guess owns the firm of whatever company yeah. that Ben works he's for. He's like, do you know who, right? he's, who she's dancing with? And they're like, nope. I have no idea. I've only been lawyering my whole life. Uh, and they're like, that's Justice Gregory or whatever. And then they're like, well, I guess you know, he's gonna be a, a happy judge now. And it's like, it, look, they're kids. They don't care about this. Like, leave that joke out. Like, even the parents, they don't care about that. <laughs> yeah, there's, like, weird, like, conflict stuff. Like, uh, Ben hasn't been to one of Casey's uh, football games because he's trying to become a partner at this law firm. Right. And, like, you know, it's the championship game or whatever, and he's, like, waiting on this meeting, mm -hmm. and he's like, you know what? This is it. I'm I'm drawing the line right here. Right. And he's like, I don't care if this affects my my ability to become a partner or not. I've missed too much of my of my child's games, and it's the championship. It started 15 minutes ago. I'm going to this game. <laughs> and then they like high five, like Drew and and Richie oh, like yeah. high five. Like what is that? That was weird. Like, it's like, well, I guess they were like happy for him that he's finally decided to like choose. 
his like own happiness and his own child over his work. But yeah, at the same but, time, they were like also piling on more work on top of yeah, him. Drew literally comes to give him more work when she yeah. brings the doll over. Like, it just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Okay, let's just leave the whole adults out of this film. They're. It would have been better if both of her parents died. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So we've said what we wanted to say. Uh, let's wrap this up. <laughs> okay. That's what we just said. <laughs> All right. We said what we wanted to say. Let's wrap this up. Clark, you ready to wrap this up? Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> what you dream, What are you doing? <laughs> okay. So I think that's pretty much it for life size. Yep. What is the grade? What's your final grade for this movie? My final grade for this movie is going to be a 7.9. i had a fun time um i think for a kids movie the dialogue was really good the characters i felt were really good um they were fun um i think originality is really where it hits a spot i feel like i i mean i've seen films where like toys come to life but not in this realm where they like become human okay and i haven't really seen a film like it since you know what I'm saying? Okay. So I think it's pretty original. Um, and so I feel like it's 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 a good movie. I had fun. It was jamming. I have, have been seeing Be A Star since watching this. Uh, that makes one of us. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest downfall is probably sound. Um, because it's just a made for TV film. Okay. The colors were nice. Okay. You thought, <laughs> what'd you give the plot? Um, I give it an eight. Oh, eight. Okay. But I feel like now the more that we talked about it, it's probably like going down. But well, we'll fix it in post. <laughs> uh, I gave it a four point oh. A four point. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, okay, like it makes sense for you because. You didn't really watch it as a kid, did you? No. Right. But anyways, this was not your demographic. I understand. No. It, I mean, that's not even it. It's just... It's a pretty terrible movie. It was okay. Like, it had... It's... So, okay is four? Yeah. I, I, <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. All right, what is your main reasoning for it to be a four? My main reasoning for it to be, be a four? I mean, is, okay, it is a made-for-TV movie. Well, yeah, but I mean, there's decent made-for-TV stuff, like TV shows, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I thought the themes were, like, clashed. Like, okay. Like, it's too deep of a, of a background, of a backstory, mm -hmm. for such a light, like, plot. Hmm. And then the plot is ridiculous and like everybody is just blinded by I guess the good looks of of Eve of mm -hmm. Tyra Banks. And it's like I mean when, when she's like giving her um her like work history or whatever when she's uh temping at the law firm. Right. Like none of that is believable. Like they they bring up stuff like Oh, where is Sunnyvale? And it's like that's the, where the sunshine always is. It's the sunshine state. <laughs> oh, Florida. <laughs> yeah, like, like yes, that's a funny joke, mm -hmm. you know, for like an adult in the kids movie to to get. Like that's right. good, but it, it it's so unbelievable. Like it's never addressed. Like all she literally just fools all of these people, and it's. I don't know. Dude, I just want to say, like... I, I think it would have been better if if Ben knew that she was a doll come to life. And, like, had Well, to... he did know. No, he, he didn't. Did. Yes, he did. No, he, just he didn't. didn't want to believe her. He didn't want to believe Casey. He yes. literally okay. told her. Yes. So he did not believe her. So uh -huh. he did not know that. And this big deal was made out of her foot with this... With this uh, uh, serial number or whatever. Mm -hmm. 
Like, and it doesn't even matter. Like, she uses a serial number to prove that she's a doll at the very end. Right. And it's like, it doesn't even matter. Yeah, I guess not. And then she wa- he watches her become a doll. He's like... I and then he just... Me. Then he just... It shows them after the fact, and he's just, you know, living his life. And Casey's running off with her friends. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I guess he's going to start start dating Drew now. And it's yeah. like... It's like, how do you go back to Drew when you had you? <laughs> yeah. Took him two years to get over his wife. And two seconds to get over Eve, I guess. <laughs> That's messed up. I gave the movie a four. <laughs> what's, okay. your, what's your favorite thing about the movie? So my... One of my favorite things is like a joke where... Uh, where they're at the office party and, and she's like walking down with uh, Richard or with Richie and he's like, oh, where do they make you or something like that? The joke was, oh, do they make all of you like this in Sunnyvale? Oh, yeah. And she yeah. said, uh, I wasn't made in Sunnyvale. I was made in Indonesia, <laughs> but packaged locally. Yeah. But then there was like some time had gone by and then uh, she's like dancing and then she, he's like, Richard goes next to like Drew and he's like, damn, Indonesians or something like that. Like, Indonesians are hot or some sh- shit like that. It's like, she's clearly black. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Um, another favorite thing uh, is where uh, she goes to the mall and then uh, she like goes to the shop where she's like <gasps> dazzled by everything. And then she like goes up to the mirror and she's like, okay, Casey, dress me. <laughs> Like, I think, I don't know. I think that's really cute. And okay. she's like, I've never dressed myself before. I don't know how to do it. Okay. <laughs> um, I did have a problem in the mall. So she, like, learns to walk in a matter of seconds, like a like a baby deer. Uh-huh. Um, and then she gets on the escalator at the mall. And she's like, barely stand up on the escalator. <laughs> like, like, motion sickness. Well, I mean, like... I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, the vertigo. <laughs> Like, you literally just stand there. It's not, not that hard. I don't know. Uh, my favorite thing is by far the IOU that Casey leaves in the glass case. Okay. Because it just draws back memories of Dumb and Dumber. Uh, okay. Where they take all the money out of this briefcase and they fill it up with IOUs. And then, <laughs> they then, fill it up? Yeah, they spend all the money. <laughs> yeah, but what do you mean they filled it up? Like, there's a ton of IOUs because they bought so many things. <laughs> and oh, so they did it gradually? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> they're like, that's as good as money, sir. Those are IOUs. I thought what you were explaining is that they, like, took it all at once, but did, like, IOU $1, like, however many dollars they took. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but, I mean, they didn't take it all out at once. I know, but that's yeah, what I yeah, thought yeah. you meant. It just seemed like something the Dumber Dumber gang <laughs> would do <laughs> okay that's funny i think that wraps it up for uh life size yeah i think that's it for life size Whew. we we have some fairly big announcements that we're yes we're, we're, we're so excited here. uh so uh yeah so the first thing this was our 10th episode hope you have enjoyed that um <clears throat> uh, what we're gonna do uh, going forward, uh, every 10 episodes, I think, we're mm-hmm. going to do what we're going to call a Fix It and Post recap episode, uh, in which uh, we kind of recap our scores that we've gone through for the previous 10 episodes, mm-hmm. uh, and then we uh, correct anything that we had wrong, and um, kind of adjust anything that we need to adjust. Yeah, like if we have uh, like different views on the film that we had reviewed afterwards, like that we want to address, that we feel like... We've shifted in uh, criticism and stuff like that. We kind of, this is that episode where we like review what we've reviewed Mm -hmm. and just uh, confirm what we want to really establish as our, our defying uh, ratings. Yeah. Uh, And with the ratings, uh, we uh, will have them all out on what we're going to call, I guess we're going to call it the big chart. (laughs) The big chart. (laughs) Um, uh, So I've been working on that. We will release that. Uh, on during this recap episode and uh, have have a little preview for you here and then you know you have access to the whole thing um, in the next episode but in either case we're also working on 
um, you know, this is a podcast. Yes. Uh, and currently, you can only get them through videos uh, on, YouTube. On, on YouTube. So uh, we're working on an audio-only companion, um, uh, which will be just be you know the episodes that we've we've completed already. I'm um, going like backlogging those and mm. and completing like an audio version, um, and hopefully I'll have have those starting to come out. Um, within the next couple of weeks. So look out for those. I'm doing that through Anchor. So it should be on Spotify and, and Apple Podcasts. You know, and, all those places you get podcasts. And all the works. Yeah, I'll, I'll announce those officially through our Instagram and, and Twitter and stuff. Um, and in our next episode, um, not counting the recap episode, because those will be like a separate... A series just, almost. Yeah, yeah, like a separate series. Uh, we're going to do another separate series from mm-hmm. our from our main movie podcast and we're calling it um we're calling it i've abandoned my child friendly movie review <laughs> <laughs> um, and the theme of uh there will be blood yeah, yeah um but it will be kid friendly yes yes i mean we, child friendly child friendly we've we've done you know life size and Coraline, but they're not really like child friendly reviews so, <laughs> right um so uh there's we have one little fan that we, this is mainly geared towards him, but I mean, I think it would be fun to like do like a quick mini review of things uh, that are more catered to like animation and like kids film. Like I feel like you can't like this film, you can't really analyze in a very deep level. Mm-hmm. Um, and so like there's not too much to speak on and it's just a good time. Like. That's what all kids' movies are. Yeah. Some of them are deep. Some of them aren't. So yeah. I think it'd be fun. So for the Abandon My Child Friendly Movie Review, we have three choices for you to choose from. The first one is going to be Howl's uh, Moving Castle by uh, Hayao Miyazaki. Uh, <laughs> um, it is a Studio Ghibli movie, which I feel like a lot of people are familiar with that, um, with that studio. Um, and it's very nice. Uh, we also have... B, How to Train Your Dragon, and that is, like, a really cool movie if you haven't seen it. Um, I think it's probably one of DreamWorks' best works um, that it it established three movies, which, I mean, the only one surpassing it is Shrek, so. Uh, <laughs> and then we have C, Robots, which I don't know if that's DreamWorks. You know if that's DreamWorks? No. I feel like it is. It might be Sony. Um, but Robots is uh, definitely underrated and a really good movie that I want Ryan to watch. So please vote for Robots. <laughs> um, but yes, go to our Instagram and vote there. Go to our Twitter. Um, Instagram, we are There Be Podcast. And Twitter, we are Pod from Basket. You can also vote in the comments. Uh, DM us. Uh, just message us on Facebook if you know who we are. Um, just do whatever you want. We're always here. We're always listening. Uh, and yeah, uh, look out for us on Spotify and Apple soon. <laughs> and yeah, share us with your friends. Yeah. Have a good laugh. Enjoy the pod. Don't and... forget to subscribe if you haven't oh, yeah. subscribed. Subscribe and, to and us. like the video as well because it yeah. really helps out. It, it does. Thank you so much for watching today. <laughs> we really appreciate it. And yeah, have a good night. Have, stay tuned for some party words. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Last name? Uh, I don't have one. Uh, address? One Maple Lane, Sunnyvale. Sunnyvale. What what state is that in? The Sunshine State. Oh, Florida. In previous position? Um, city? No, I, I meant where was your last job? Oh, okay, okay. I was helping out with a space shop. <laughs>